Pardon okay, me. good evening, everyone. We will call the meeting to order. Um, the opening session, the regular session of the Cascade School District Board of Directors will now convene in the Cascade uh, High School Library and via Zoom. The laws governing boards of education require that their work be done where the public can observe their actions. Please remember that this is the board's meeting for the public to observe. Others may participate only with the approval of the board. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. And there's a guest list. Did anyone here not sign the guest list? <laughs> right, so everybody signed? Thank you. Okay, number two, approval of the minutes, approval of the minutes, March 14th, 2022. I move to approve the minutes from March 14th, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of March 14th, 2022. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Number three, prioritize the agenda. Mr. Drill. I think we can go right down the agenda. Should be a relatively uh, quick meeting. This evening. All right, you got it. Um, on the number four is the reports. First report, superintendent's report, Mr. Drill. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to April. Um, I think it's April. It doesn't feel like April outside, but uh, we were checking rows this morning at 5 o'clock and 4.30, and uh, we were uh, able to come to school on time, unlike some of our friends north of us. Um, so there's some people that actually took their full day off today in the metro area for school, and uh, then the wet snow down power lines, and away you go. So... We were fortunate to do that. Um, I think tomorrow morning will be okay, but Wednesday and Thursday morning uh, still have potential. So we'll keep an eye on that and uh, we'll be out uh, checking roads and, and going from there. So um, I have my report in front of you. The one thing I really want to uh, remind you of is the, the enrollment. Um, we continue, uh, I say we, I continue to hear from my colleagues uh, across the state, particularly in the Valley, about the number of kids that they've lost uh, in their school districts. And um, we are, as per my report, continuing to hold right around uh, 2,570 kids. Um, that is just um, surprising considering that out of the 21 school districts in our ESD region, I think there's only four of us that have actually gone up in numbers. Everybody else has lost kids. Um, lots of people went uh, to homeschool. Lots of people went to online school. Uh, they haven't had a chance to come back. Um, I really do believe that our attempt to have kids in school here um, on campus as quickly as we could during the COVID uh, trial over the last 18, 19 months, right? As soon as we could get them in last spring, we did part-time. Uh, we tried to make sure our kids were here as, many, as, as much as possible. I think that's really made a difference for us. Um, lots of other school districts particularly have lost elementary kids, and our elementary numbers are holding, as a matter of fact, they're a little higher than normal. So um, pretty happy about that. The other thing is, is that uh, the legislature, right at the very end, uh, gave additional money again for another summer program. It's not as big and as robust as last year's, but nonetheless, we will be receiving uh, a, a good sum of money. I'm thinking right around five hundred thousand um, dollars for the summer, and then it'll get split up um, between nine through twelve is one part, and then K eight is the other part. And then we have to match twenty five percent of it, which we already have uh, in our budget for this year, ready to go. So we're good to go there. Um, we are getting ready, uh, getting together this week with principals to talk about that on Friday, and start to try to build the parameters around what that might look like. So. Those are probably the two big things right now. Obviously, um, without masks for the last few weeks has been fantastic. Uh, I've had teachers tell me I can see kids' faces. Uh, I've had kids say I can see the teachers' faces. Life has gone pretty well that way. And uh, just that um, being able to handle that part of it academically and then social emotionally, that's what we're working on right now. So, questions? Any questions? And Mr. Drill, yeah. am I correct that this is Teacher Appreciation Week? This is, no, no, was it last week? It's in May. It's, it's in May? May. So oh, classified, no. classified okay. was last month mm -hmm. and certified is next month. Okay. So you landed right in the right middle. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for that. Yep. The financial director's report. Mr. Pillar. 
Yeah, my report in front of you as well. Um, the biggest takeaway probably is our, the strength of our cash position this year. Uh, that is directly due to what Mr. Drill said in his report with the strength in our enrollment numbers. Um, the the uh, state of Oregon counts average daily membership, which means butts in the chair every day. And uh, with those larger than expected numbers, um, our income or revenue has been going up pretty substantially as we go through the year. So that's been very helpful for us as we both conservatively budgeted on the revenue side and on the expense side. So we're uh, seeing some good smooth sailing into next year. Our focus in our office has been in producing the proposed budget for next year. Um, at your next board meeting, we'll be having the um, uh, initial meeting of the budget committee next month. So, um, but everything is looking good so far. I, I don't have any um, uh, real concerns. Um, again, we've been able to maintain all the federal money uh, doing extra things for kids as opposed to trying to backfill. Some of my colleagues have been using extra dollars to backfill current operations, and we've been very fortunate we don't have to do that. But all of that is primarily due to strong cash management projects, but also um, maintaining enrollment uh, and strong enrollment, particularly relative to the other school districts in our area. And then any questions? When do we get the budget packet? The budget packet will come out about a week before your uh, uh, before your uh, so your first, initial budget committee meeting. So the first of May. Yeah, the first of May. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm scheduled to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, whatever that first May Friday in May is. I don't. Okay. I can't see my calendar in my head. Okay, you don't. You don't have the date yet. Um, I don't have the date for the pack. What's the first Friday in May? The budget calendar is in the packet. Oh, the budget calendar. Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? The budget calendar and packet. Okay, the budget calendar is in this month's order packet. You do okay, have to approve it. that. Um, but I, the question as to when you receive the proposed budget uh, should be the, the okay. target as the first Friday in May. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? I got one for you real quick. Sure. On the school buses, with the price yes. of fuel going up, do we have a flat rate with the school bus company or is there a, a verbiage in the contract for fuel? Are we we actually pay, we pay it for our own fuel. Okay. So we buy fuel bulk. They don't okay. actually pay for That's fuel. not part of our contract, it's fuel, right? That's our- No, fuel. no. Uh, everything else is flat. Um, right. And it's negotiated every year okay. and it goes up with the CPI and all right, that. Right, right, right. But fuel is our problem. But fuel is our problem. Okay, so. that's fair. I was just curious how that worked on the contract. And, you answered it. Yeah, okay. okay. Good. Thank you for that. All right, moving on. We've got C high school principal's report. Mr. Rasmussen. Good evening, you guys. You have my report in front of you. Um, I just wanted to highlight um kind of how we arrived at our objectives and goals and areas of focus this year. When we came to back to school um full time as the first one we've been full time for you know more than a school year. Um, we really wanted to look at what do kids need because we were worried. We had them last year for up until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, but now we're asking for a full day. So we asked teachers in the first year or two or in the first month to come up with what are the, the gaps you're seeing? What are the needs? And so we came up with a big long list of like 78 things. Then we did some collaborative work and we really synthesized down to kids need help managing their lives. And that comes to resources, to time, to to the things that they use. They need to help to, with motivation, okay? Um, a lot of times extrinsic, extrinsic motivation is a nice gift and tool, but also looking at how can we intrinsically motivate them? How can we build that within themselves so they leave here? They don't need to get a Snickers bar every time they do something. And then finally, really about how can we continue to help kids communicate? Um, better because we noticed that communication was a severe lacking point. They just hadn't done it in a formal manner for a year and a half. Now, maybe they just need to get back into practice, but we really wanted to spend more time uh, talking with kids about how can we help you write better, speak better, listen better, communicate better with your peers. And so um, those are areas of focus this year. Teachers are looking at their curriculum, trying to include those things. Um, we have a, a planner that we've created, we're suggesting kids use it. I've asked teachers to spend a minute or two every period looking at um, how can you help kids organize their lives? Hey, if you have a planner, and I hope you do, 
will you please write that we have a test in it next Friday, okay? If you have a planner, and I hope you do, some teachers are modeling for them in front under their doc cams, um, but they're using examples every day, trying to get kids to use some system of organization, okay? Um, and uh, we're finding this working, okay? Grades were better than we thought uh, second try. First try was rough, second try we thought was a little bit better. Whether it's just rhythm or actual our specific interventions, um, we were happy that we're seeing more results. So um, anyway, those are kind of our areas of focus. I'm not calling them goals this year because uh, we're really trying to ease people back into school without giving them definitive you know, benchmarks and hard lines. We're really like, hey, I want you to think about these things this year, okay? And as we go forward next year, we're gonna be kind of full speed ahead saying, oh, this is what we're gonna do. This is a goal, but this year we wanted to kind of give everybody back in and try to really focus on these specific three areas, okay? Um, we've also talked with uh, AVID. AVID took a hit um, during uh, COVID, and it was primarily because AVID is such a relational class. Um, if you recall, AVID is a program where uh, it's twofold. One, it is uh, centered around an AVID elective class where we identify potential students who would fit that mold. And those are kids who have potential, they're doing well, they don't have a lot of support at home. Maybe they might be the first kid to ever go to college, um, but they're workers, okay? And we put them into these elective classes and we find teachers um, who are going to go through some AVID activities with them. These are everything from organization to note-taking to um, how to communicate better, some of, our, some of our actual school focuses, and ultimately ends up into scholarships and how to apply for college and those things, things that you've heard Lisa Iverson talk about before. Um, but with COVID, as such a relational class, we just weren't able to do it over Zoom or uh, that way. So our numbers are small this year, so we're rebuilding. Um, we're going to get back to a full four classes. I've already got three of the four teachers identified for next year. Um, and we were able to meet with the new state uh, director. Her name is Elsa Foot. She came and did a, a walkthrough of all the schools in the district um, and uh, gave us some ideas and tips about how to go forward. We are not unlike most of the schools. Um, the concept of AVID just got set aside as we were just trying to survive um, how to educate kids in the best way. So those are kind of our areas of focus this year um, when it gets down to a non-specific content area, backing away from that, looking at what are we doing as a school to help kids? And those are just things I wanted to highlight for you this year. Any thoughts? Yeah. One question. Yeah. So AVID. We only pick certain kids to go into the AVID program. Is that what I've mm -hmm. always heard? Mm -hmm. Okay, so help me understand. We take the top kids and they become top kids still. Okay, where do the medium and lower kids fit into the AVID program? Great question. Because the top always gets the top. First of all, I forgot to mention the second emphasis of AVID, which is the school wide AVID is where all teachers are working at um, improving the instructional strategies, helping with organization, those kind of things. We're taking 15 people to Seattle this, mm -hmm. uh, this summer right. to help re reinvigorate that, that focus. So all kids are getting some of the same stuff. And the truth is we're not taking the top, okay? Um, it's really the next tier. It's the next group of kids who, who oh, I'll give you an example. A kid who, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a, scenario. A kid who is from a single parent family whose mom or dad has never gone to college um, and the students sloughing along getting B's in their classes. They don't have the support. We're worried they graduate from high school. They go and don't follow their dreams or passion. They just go find a retail job and get stuck in that pattern because it's hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's the cycle of uh, I don't want to get too far down the road, but there's a cycle of poverty that exists. And right. that you don't you don't reach for the stars. You don't go to the next level. So it's really that group of kids we're looking at. Okay. Um, and it's an application process. I, I know for a fact in the junior high, we don't turn people away. The only ones we turn away are the ones we know aren't going to make it. Like they don't have the will to or the stick to itiveness. I mean, AVA stands for advancement via individual determination. They've got to have that individual determination. If they don't, We've tried to put kids in to save them. Hey, this kid's a really nice kid. We think they can do amazing. We know they're not really a worker yet, but maybe Avid will make them a worker. Okay. It doesn't, okay? okay? It doesn't. So these are workers, but we just know that they can do a little bit better with a little more attention, a little more focus. 
This is not our top, top students. They okay. are largely never in Africa because um, they don't need it. They have okay. the support at home, they've got the skills. This is that next tier. Um, and this is filled by uh, historically under, underserved groups, um, whether, um, whether they're, you know, uh, some of our minority groups in this in this um, in this community, or or uh, students of poverty, um, a lot of kids are in that in that in that area for sure fit that bill. Okay, okay. that helps. Yeah, for sure. That was my first concern too when I heard about it ten years ago. I'm like, right. why are we just helping these kids? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. But the further I got into it, I love the school wide concept. We are an avid school, and they added that about six eight years ago. We are an avid school. I love that concept. Everybody can own it mm -hmm. instead of just the kids who are in the avid elective um and we'll get back to that for okay. sure for sure okay thank you i want to ask one more question on your your manage motivate and communicate yeah. that you identified and it says each one of these says the same thing how can we help our student manage how can we help our student motivate how can we help our student communicate could we get a follow-up on that maybe in, in six months to say what's the answer how did you how are we what are we yeah. doing i mean I, I like that they can identify it i guess mm -hmm. the next question is now what well, those are the questions we ask each teacher to answer in their right. own class. So right. I'll try to come up with some examples for you. Right. That's so what I mean. If we can see the now good. what, how did we, or how are we? Yeah. Follow sure. up. That'd be great. You bet. I will. Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Thank you, Ms. Rest. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. All right. Moving on is D, Junior High Principal's Report. Ms. Lede. Ms. Lede. Ms. Lede is working on bringing kids back from this. So she's she's chatting up with us right now. She's can't working on that. Think it's They're coming back every day. They're going back up. That's, that's how we built it uh, this year due to COVID. That stuff. Okay. When we, six months ago, when we were talking about it, that's the way we had to, to build it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we picked this week, not last week. So um, they're up there. Uh, I heard they enjoyed all the snow and had a lot of fun. Molly might be able to fill in a little bit more. Did you hear much more about that? No, I just okay. saw lots of snowy pictures. Got, yeah, lots yeah. of snowy pictures. Yeah. And so their buses are, are bringing them down right now. They'll be in the daylight picture. And once they get down out of mm -hmm. Camp Tadmore, it looks like the roads are fine. So they're working through that. Um, Ms. Lede had on her, in her report, uh, kind of two things. Counselors, the two counselors that they've hired really worked at friendship groups and, and uh, some of that social emotional conversation we've had before, particularly at the junior high level. And they're working on attendance. And I think Molly will talk a little bit about some of the other ABC. I noticed something you had, so I'll leave that to you. I don't want to steal your thunder. Okay. But uh, those are the two things she's working on. And she said, if you have additional questions, please feel free to get a hold of it. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. You bet. Moving on is junior high assistant principal's report. Ms. Gailey, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, you have your my report in front of you. Um, I did put a little, this is technically my um, assistant principal report, so um, I just put in some stuff on the title, though, that we are, um, that we're moving forward on, and so I'm going to jump to what we we're doing is um, my vice principal duties. Um, it's, we've had a, um, it's been a great year uh, trying to, I felt like we kind of all got thrown in, and, and we had, a, we've had some kids that have been um, great, and we've had some kids that have definitely been a challenge, and trying to figure out um, how to help those kids is important. Um, Mr. Severson the other day at a staff meeting, it was, it was so great. He said something about, um, it was a Gordon Ramsay quote, and I don't have it all, but the one that stuck out to me, he said, um, Gordon Ramsay says that the only way to really be successful is if you actually teach kids the tasks that they need, you know, teach those people the actual thing that they need. And we all kind of, it was funny in the room, we all went, Oh yeah, we need to remember to teach kids how to act appropriately. We need to teach them how to, uh, Mr. Asherson talked a lot about communication. Um, I just worked with a child today that had taught, that had kind of sassed back to a teacher and we went through this whole scenario, you know, how could you rephrase that? How could you say that differently? And it was really interesting to listen to this student kind of, you could see the light bulb coming on. And it, I just don't think, I just think that they're out of practice. And so teaching them again how to um, do that. And, and because we've been really focusing on that, our teachers have been focusing on that, um, I really feel like, I think we are starting to get ahead of it. We're starting to get ahead of it. We're being much more proactive. We're talking to kids um, before a lot of um, things come up. Kids are trusting us. They're coming and talking to us. We have parents trusting us, giving us heads up on, on difficulties. And so um, that's been really positive. And one of the things we were talking about, what is something that's positive? Well. I really wanted to emphasize those students who have been doing the right thing, right? They have the traits that are going to make them super successful. And 
And as you all know, we need to be on time and we need to be respectful to people around us. And so um, Tamara Nixon pulled a list for us of every kid who hadn't had a tardy for um, the second trimester and then any kid who didn't have a um, a disciplinary action against them. So that's that's everything, you know, that's that's any anything that they could have got. And we ended up with, I think it was 265 kiddos. Um, and that was, that made me put a big old smile on my face. I was like, yes, there's 265 that have had nothing. And um, I got to go around. We, um, Debbie Lede takes great joy in finding hats for Arnie Louder to have to wear um, when they hand out prizes. And so she found a tiger hat for all of us. And so we put on tiger hats and walked around and handed out um, tiger paws to the kids. We just walked in the classroom, gave a little spiel, had the kids stand up real quick, threw them out and talked about um, characteristics and, and traits that make for success. And so um, that was really fun. And then later in the day, we did ABC um, awards also. So that was to any kid who had only, who, who got ABCs, um, no Ds or Fs basically for the second trimester. So we're really able to, I don't know, highlight some of those kids that are really doing the right thing. and. Um, and let people know that we really are, you know, I'm so grateful for those kids. They're helping us with our culture and our, and our leadership within the, within the school. So um, that's been kind of a fun, um, a, a little fun thing we've done the last couple of weeks. And we're going to continue that through the third try. And um, we're kind of brainstorming ways to, you know, to help teach some of those tasks to or some of those traits and, and help kids um, just make some better choices, I guess, as we go through the, into the spring. And, um, we're going to be sending them up to the high school, so we want to we want to send them <laughs> ready to go to be freshmen. So that's all I have for right now. Is there any questions? Questions. So I'll ask on the ABCs. How many? What percentage of the kids fell into the ABC category? I, that was De Debbie. Put that I know it was on so, hers, and I had, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I but don't, you mentioned so, it, so I thought I. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know. The, I, didn't know the, I don't know the percentage okay, sorry, of hats that we had there. So, but I would be more than happy to look that up. Here. <laughs> no problem. No problem. All right, that's all I've got for you. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. All right. Moving on is junior high assistant. Oh, nope. We just did that one. Pardon me. Yeah. Um, elementary principal's report. Okay. And Mrs. Canfield is on online. But she's got her report here, and she said if you have any questions, if you want to take a quick look, she can respond uh, via Zoom. She's unable to make it today. Well, I hope she's feeling well, mm -hmm. and we will. I, I will pass on any questions till next time. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair Anyone enough. else? Off the hook, nope. Cindy. No, we'll wait. All right. Take we're good care on of that. yourself, Cindy. I'll take care. Okay, moving on is G Special Service Director's Report, and that's going to Ms. Johnson. Hi. You have my report in front of you, which is a lot of information and not tied nicely in a bow, and I did that on purpose because all of it feeds into each other. So one of my priority initiatives is to provide high quality instruction for all of our students in special education. Well, what that means is I took some data and I wanted to see what is happening across our district and I compared it to multiple districts around us that look like us. And I had the privilege, we'll call it a privilege, of opportunity to do our civil rights data for our district, which is about 80 hours of my life. And, it, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, and at first I grumbled. Okay, I grumbled a lot through it, but then I started noticing a trend where my students in special education, they, there was some striking numbers for me. And one of those numbers is actually on this data report. And that is the amount of students graduating on time that are in special education. In 2018-19, only 59% of our students in special education graduated on time. It improved in 2020-21, it went up to 76%, and that's the graph that you have in front of you. While it's improving, to me, I look across our, all of the data, and that is the area that we need to put more emphasis on, because that's our lowest area of student achievement. When I'm looking at all of our programs, which is why I listed all of them for you in our report, school by school, I'm thinking about how are we serving our kids and is it the best model and the best way? And what you see at the elementary at Almsville, 
you see a lot of programs in one school. One of those programs is called Basic Skills. That Basic Skills room serves some of our students that have a higher level of need and they might be lower cognitive skills. Then those students historically have gone to basic skills in the junior high. And then those students historically have gone to basic skills at our high school. Once they hit that basic skills classroom at the high school, they will be graduating with a modified diploma. All of our students that qualify for a modified diploma then move on. They have the opportunity to move on to our adult transition program. I'm seeing a higher number of students who are graduating with a modified diploma than most of our surrounding districts. I am going to be taking a look at all of our programs and I'm possibly going to take away the basic skills of the elementary because research shows the more time our kids are spending in general education classrooms, the higher success rate we see later down the road. I was that student. I was in special education. I'm dyslexic. I never spent any time in a specialized classroom in my elementary years. I struggled in junior high and I struggled in high school, but now look at me. And that's a story I tell our kids when I walk into classrooms, especially our high school classrooms, because I've had several conversations with several of our high school students this school year in my office where they've come and sought me out and they're ready to quit. They wanna drop out. And I say, not on my watch. And I tell them my story. We can get our kids to graduate, whether they're on an IEP or not, and they can be successful. So my goal is, is to change these numbers and to keep them going. There you go. What questions do you have for me? My son was also one of those. And he had dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And struggled all the way through. And it wasn't until high school that they decided to, I pushed the test. And they said, well, we didn't want to label him earlier. I go, he was labeled from the beginning anyway. It would have been better to have known. So I love the fact that now we're finding it earlier in kids to give them the help that they need. But I agree. I think basic skills in elementary, not a good idea. So thank you for the work. You're welcome. Can I ask you, what, what yeah. does the adult transition program, what is that? What does it look like? Please. So. First, all students in special education are eligible from preschool to 21. If they graduate with a modified diploma, then they continue those services till they're 21. If they graduate with a regular diploma, then their services end at that 18 or when they graduate. So an adult transition program specifically targets our students who graduated with modified, extended, or a certificate of attendance. And we're looking at making successful, independent, as possible students for adults. So actually we are partnering with several different um, job sites right now, getting our kids work skills, volunteer skills. We're getting them out into the community. Um, my adult transition teacher, I have to say, we hit the cream of the crop. She is a self-starter and a self-motivator. She's teaching these kids how to write their resumes. She's done jobs, job interviews with them. Some of the things that they haven't got quite yet over here at the high school for our students, and then they're starting next week on Tuesday, they get to work, they get to go to the Marion Polk County Food Share and they start volunteering. Then we have partnered with a garden, um, I'm all of a sudden drawing blank on the name, but it's a nursery where they're bringing in all the supplies, we're doing all their planting for them and then they get to go out to the nursery as well. Um, and then I have another student, his dream is to volunteer for his church, to work at his church. He starts there next week and we provide an adult to go in and help him do that. Okay. So are those kids that are in the 1821 program, are mm -hmm. they part of these numbers when it says there's 387 students eligible to receive? Are they part of that? When, yes. we, when we're doing head count, they're part of that group. Yes. Okay. And they go on till they're 21, they stay part of our yes. of our head count. They, it's not a required program. So a lot of those kids, we have um, at least eight more students who are eligible this school year for the adult transition program. And they chose for various reasons not to come. Some of those kids already had full-time jobs and they, they didn't want to. Some of those kids were like, I'm an adult. I don't have to go to school anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But if they so choose to be part of us, mm -hmm. they're captured and, and we're getting, we're counting them. Yes, for our they're part of our ADM. We get right. money. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. Anything else? Any questions? No.
All right, thank you so awesome. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on, we've got communication director's report. That's going to be Ms. Sadler. So you have my report in front of you, and I wanted to elaborate tonight more on Parent Square, which has been uh, a big responsibility for me this school year. Um, Parent Square is our district wide communications platform. And it's funny because I've been managing that since we adopted it at the beginning of the school year. The phone call I took right before this meeting started was Mrs. Gates, who was trying to get a notification out to all the sixth grade parents that the bus was on, on its way home and they needed to meet their kids at the school and she was having some technical issues. So it takes up quite a bit of my time. Uh, but we adopted Parent Square before at the beginning of the school year because prior to this year, we were using so many different communication tools across the district. Um, district level, we were using School Messenger. Some schools were using Classroom Dojo. Some were using Remind. Um, some just regular like Gmail lists. So we adopted a platform that can be used at the classroom level, the school level, and the district level. And one of the things I really like about Parent Square is it's um, a very mobile friendly program. So we have a lot of families who are receiving their communication via an app, app notifications or text message notifications. And we're always on our phones. So we might as well try and spoon feed them the information that way. Um, and the program's also given us some really good data on how people are receiving their communication, how they wanna be communicated with, and um, if, if they're opening their communication, the language they're using and things like that. So it's nice when a parent says, I never received that email. And you can actually look at the data and say, you did, and you opened it, and, and here's that result. So that's really, really been nice um, to have. Um, across the district, we have about a 63% open rate for email um, and or just for all notifications, which if you look at. I gotta ask. So you can tell if I don't open that? Mm -hmm. And you don't. <laughs> Your wife does. Oh, good. Yeah. Which is which is brings me to my next point. Uh, with most students having two parents connected to their account, with a 63% open rate, at least one parent is opening that communication. And it's not you, Mr. Spiegel. So um, <laughs> having that information is great. And uh, having you know families receiving communication and being informed. The other cool thing about the program is it's very interactive. So as families are receiving communication, they can appreciate, they can reply. Um, there's options for signing up for volunteering or for parent-teacher conferences or permission slips. All of that can be done through the program. And so as you interact <laughs> with the content, you're 75% more likely to remember, even if it's something that doesn't necessarily pertain to you. So we want messages to stick in people's heads and things to stop getting like fall through the cracks. So that's one of the reasons we have this program and it's been um, probably taken up most of my time this school year, but it's been fun to manage. And as we continue to use it over the years, I think people will feel more comfortable with it and it'll be able to be a one-stop shop for a lot of the things that we put out to our families. Questions on that or anything else in my report? Sounds interesting, maybe I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, you haven't even registered here. I, wait a minute. <laughs> You're sending it to the wrong address. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, thank you for everything that you do. Yeah. Thank you. All right, moving on. Number five, discussion and communications personnel. Ms. Morphew. Good evening. So it is hiring season, and probably from now until forever. <laughs> I'm hoping in like July, August at the latest. I'll be bringing you um, new hire recommendations. And the three that are on your list today um, were actually hired as temporary um, teachers for the, for the school year. And so we are bringing them back for the upcoming school year, not as a temporary, but bringing them on as a full-fledged member of Cascade. So we have Amber Burns in sixth grade, Ashley Nunn um, at Turner Elementary, and Donna Ray Lewis um, coming back to do our Back program to junior high. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? No, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I do have one question. One question. How many more do we know that we have to fill? Um, I believe I have five elementaries. 
I have a temporary high school math. I have a high school choir and a high school special ed. Uh, autism specialist, but we're, yeah. Um, trying to remember what else. Those are the big ones. So we're looking at about 20. Eight to, eight to 10 more. Yeah, yeah. It probably looking about like what it typically does each school year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we usually have about 20 to 25 new hires. Okay. I think we'll be back to normal this year. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on is our board member vacancy. Um, we have a spot that we need to fill, gang, and I believe we're all in agreement at this point that we'll hold um, interviews for folks that are interested in coming on board. Anybody have any thoughts or concerns going that route? No, no, that's no. the way you do it. Okay. Mr. Drill, do we have any timeline that we need to follow or adhere to? So you have a budget committee hearing in May. Okay. Um, the suggestion would be that you... Um, <clears throat> Um, ask Cheryl to put out for um, anybody that would like to send in application, and then you could close it at May and then review those and then interview in June. Okay, if you would like. Okay, to do it that way. Um, the budget, the budget hearing is coming and it's coming up here, but you you do have to do in May so you can get it wrapped up <coughs> in June. So right, unless you want to do both in May, my suggestion would be to right. No, I, I'm on board with that. Does anybody yeah. have any concerns going that route? No, no. I think that works. I think yeah. that'd be fine. Okay. We can we can put it together and Cheryl will take Good. care of the business. Wonderful. Okay. Any other thoughts on that, gang? No. No. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on is the budget committee calendar, and that is going to be Mr. Pillar. Yes, your budget committee calendar is um, very similar to the way it's been the last couple of years. So the um, budget committee meets at, your, at the start of your May board meeting, and then we. Um, we have been a district that has traditionally had one budget committee meeting. Um, if you feel like you need to have more, you can certainly schedule another meeting. You just have to have enough notice time. Uh, so you need to do it in a, in a week or 10 days later. Um, and then uh, once the uh, budget committee gets approved or the uh, proposed budget gets approved, then it comes to the board again for final adoption and appropriation after June. The hard deadline for that is June 30th. You must have an adoption uh, appropriation resolution passed before the end of June. Okay. Mr. Pillar, if we're yeah. doing the budget meeting on May 9th, when will the budget committee get that packet? Uh, the packet uh, comes out of uh, the first Friday of May. The first uh, Friday of May. Yeah, and so it's, it's, it's going to be the week, the Friday before the meeting. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, timeline that we should Okay. Follow. Okay. You, would you prefer to have it more time than that? Uh, I would prefer that we not have less time than that. Yeah, I understand that part. Okay. Is it possible to get it sooner? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's just you know, it's just time. So right. um, I can shut my door and no, I mean, I don't want to speak to me, and I'd be happy to get that. No, 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 I don't want. I don't want to wish that upon you. No. I, I think uh, I I think you know I I can commit to having it done the first Friday in May, but if uh, if that doesn't give you enough time to review that, I'm happy. No, I I, don't, I that think that'd be fine. That'd be fine. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah. Does anybody? Yeah. Okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So he'll have it to you by the sixth at the latest, the, the couple of days. Yeah, I mean, the sooner you're fine. If not the sixth, this fine. Yeah. Okay. I can talk and see what resources he needs, and we can right. see if we can figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Super. Right. Thank you. Anything else on the budget committee calendar? No, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Moving on to 6A is second try employee resignation, Mr. Drew. Actually, it's not re resignation, it's re right. recognition. recognition. What did I say? Resignation. No. I recognition. hope they don't resign. Recognition. <laughs> Pardon. These guys, these guys and, 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 and gals have done an amazing job. So uh, a number of years back, we talked about uh, trying to make sure we recognize uh, great educators. Uh, across our district and every trimester in our largest buildings, we, we recognize two people at our smaller buildings, we recognize one and uh, we kind of rotate that process. So you have names there. Um, every year, Cheryl does an amazing job of doing something there right by her desk where we recognize them, put their names up, where we always wanna make sure that 
you guys see this and then we put it out to our school community here and basically say congratulations to these folks. So every school has somebody on there. Uh, it goes with a big thank you. I, I handwrite a thank you on behalf of you guys and myself. And there's a, a, a small gift card in there for everybody. So uh, just to say thank you for the extra hard work that they do. So I wanted to let you know so you can see who those folks are. All right. Any questions on that, anybody? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Drill. Next one is the work session tour. So we mentioned a month ago that um, we were hoping to be able to get you guys out on a tour for the May before the May board meeting starts. So you've got the budget part of, of that. You've got the regular board meeting. And before that, you've got the tour of the new Turner uh, building that we uh, put in here over the course of winter. Mr. Lovell would like to share that information and show you that um, as well. And Mrs. Iverson has also graciously said that they'd like to, to make sure that you're there and maybe do a gathering and maybe we'll have a little bite of food so you can kind of see uh, how the building went and how that process works. So my assumption would be is that that's okay. I can start to build that timeline and, and we'll get that out to you so, so you know in advance what that looks like. Great. Sounds good. Sounds good. Any concerns? We'll take care of it. Nope. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the public comments. Bear with me here. Cascade School District's public comment procedure follows House Bill 2560. The bill requires the governing body of a public body to the extent reasonably possible to make all meetings accessible remotely through um, technology, technological means and provide the opportunity for members of the general public to remotely submit oral and written testimony. Public comment forms and written submissions must be submitted by 12 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Only those who have turned in a comment form by the deadline will be given the opportunity to address the board. Please note, this is especially important to remember that we all model the way for our students and we ask that you share your thoughts in a respectful way. The board chair will ask you to stop speaking if you were not able to adhere to these guidelines. Audience time is not intended as a forum for public debate. At this time, I lost my... Okay. It's on. It's on. Oh, okay. At this time, Christopher Clark, um, <coughs> is he with us, Mr. Clark? With us? Audio. Audio. Okay. I, I'm here. I, I was just like listening in. I'm the only reason I'm listening in is I thought if I decide to apply for the open school board position, I should probably witness a school board meeting. What a okay, fair enough. Um, so I don't really have any public comment other than that I'm interested perhaps in being a board member. Well, we appreciate your interest, so thank you. <coughs> Any other comments, Mr. Clark? Is that all you had? No, you can call me Chris too, but yeah. Right. Anything else, is that all you have for us? Yeah, I mean, I could interview right now, but I <laughs> no, don't no, no, no. We do that. <laughs> No, nope, no, nope, not necessary, but thank you. All right, well, I, we appreciate you uh, joining us this evening. <coughs> and I think that was our only comment. Yep, all right. Then we'll move on to resolutions. Um, um, agenda item 8A, resolution regarding new hire recommendations. It resolved the Cascade Board of Education moves to approve the hire of Amber Burns, junior high teacher, Ashley Nunn, elementary teacher, and Donna Ray Loomis, FACS teacher, as recommended by the administration. Second. Agenda item 8A, resolution regarding new hire recommendations has been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 8B, resolution regarding board member vacancy. Be it resolved, the Cascade Board of Education moves to accept applicants for board member position four with the term ending June 30th, 2023. Second. 8B, resolution regarding board member vacancies has been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 8C, resolution regarding budget committee calendar. Be it resolved, the Cascade Board of Education moves to approve the proposed 2022 2023 budget committee calendar. Second. HC resolution regarding budget committee calendar has been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Future agenda items. So, two things. One, I um, appreciate that Mr. Rasmussen just reminded me, he was looking at me. 
um, that to make sure to invite all the board members to graduation. Uh, and that's June 8th, Mr. Rasmussen. Yep, June 8th, out on the big field. Right. So at Federico Field, please. So make sure to jot that down on your list of things so you can be there. And then the second thing is, um, I didn't get a chance earlier. I probably should have said something. Um, we had um, Madeline and Ms. Sattler, Mr. Pillar, and uh, Mr. Ramey go to the Bonds and Ballots conference this last Friday. Do any of you want to say anything in our meeting about that? So informational stuff you want to share. I, I wanted to make sure. I, re, I was remiss in making sure I should have said that too. Uh, for me, it was just a very good investment of time, and I'm very glad that I went. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future. Good. More, more questions, right? Right. I was told that by Oregon School Boards Association that they do have trainings uh, back online for school board members in July, but the bigger training that uh, we have always traditionally gone to is the one in November. I am hopeful to uh, connect with you guys if it fits schedules uh, to have you guys go to the November board training. Um, I'm, I think they're going to go back to Portland. They're, it's going to either going to be in Portland or it will be in Salem, one of the two. But I will get you the information as it becomes available. And those are the two things that I have. Wonderful. Okay. Anything else? No. We stall a minute. We won't break a record for going the fast. Pretty quick. Time. All right. Anything else, anybody? All right, we're meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you coming.